Yep. That's my finger pinned to the quilt. Cool. Hey everybody, it's TNT from Dynamite Designs and welcome back to my channel. As I'm filming this, it is now September, which means a few things. Fall sweaters, apple cider, autumn leaves, but most of all, it means spooky season. I have a lot of projects I'd like to do this year, but I narrowed it down to at least one to start with, and that's going to be a Halloween quilt. But this project is pretty special to me because I come from a big family of quilters. My grandmother has been quilting ever since I can remember, my mother quilts, my aunt's quilt, and my sister actually runs a quilting store with her mother-in-law. I, however, have never quilted anything in my life, so this will definitely be a new experience. I started out by searching for photos of different quilts that had patterns I enjoyed and thought would make a really good spooky quilt. Once I had a couple I liked, I sent those to my sister and my mom to make sure that it wasn't going to be too difficult for a first project. Thankfully, my sister is fantastic and helped me figure out a pattern. Next was getting the fabrics, which was the fun part. So these are the fabrics that I decided on for the quilt. The bottom four fabrics here are going to be making up the patches. The orange is going to be making up the binding as well as going in between the patches to break things up. I have the black speckle for the border and then the very back of the quilt is going to be this absolutely beautiful Victorian kind of-esque Halloween fabric. Before I forget, you may have noticed, I have upgraded my sewing space. I now have a space big enough to cut fabric, not on my floor unless the pattern pieces are bigger than my desk, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. In quilting, it's really important to make sure that everything is perfectly squared. So to make sure of that, I'm gonna be using a cutting mat. You really wanna make sure it's as wide as the width of your fabric. I'm also gonna be using a quilter's ruler. I really love this one because everything is already measured out, making things so much easier. And then to cut everything, I'm gonna be using a rotary cutter. To start the patches, I'm going to be cutting a piece that's the entire width of the fabric, making sure it's eight and a half inches long. After trimming away the salvage, I'm going to be cutting out three blocks that are eight and a half inches wide. Then three more blocks that are four and a half inches wide. Next, I'm going to cut one more strip from the main fabric that is four and a half inches long, and then use that to cut three 13 and a half inch rectangles. So now I have my eight and a half by eight and a half squares, eight and a half by four and a half rectangles, and four and a half by 13 and a half rectangles out of one fabric. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other patches. Next up is the orange fabric. I'm going to be cutting 10 strips that are the width of the fabric and that are an inch and a half long. From these strips, I'm going to cut out 12 blocks that are eight and a half inches long. And 20 blocks that are 13 and a half inches long. In case you didn't notice, quilting has a lot of cutting and a lot of math. So the first day was mainly just focusing on getting all of the pieces that are going to make up the patches cut out to the right measurements. So now the next step is going to be actually arranging them on my desk the way that I want them to look before I actually stitch them. Mainly because I don't want to end up with two patches that have the exact same fabric right next to each other and I don't want to run out so I want to make sure that I have everything just the way I want it before I actually start stitching anything. So despite having a nice big desk, I still had to use the floor to lay out how I wanted the quilt to look. It took way too long to make sure that none of the same fabric was touching side by side. There might be a few diagonally, but I'm kind of okay with that at this point because of how long it took to make sure that no similar fabric was side by side. So now that I have the general layout, I can start stitching together. I'm taking one of the eight and a half inch orange strips and pinning it with right sides together to one of the eight and a half inch blocks. 
This gets stitched together with a quarter inch seam allowance and pressed open. Next I'm taking one of the four and a half inch by eight and a half inch rectangles and pinning that to the orange strip. This also gets stitched and pressed, making sure not to disturb the previous seam. Then I'm taking one of the 13 and a half inch orange strips and pinning this along the bottom of our current block. This also gets stitched and pressed. Then I'm taking one of the four and a half by 13 and a half rectangles and pinning that along the bottom. And you guessed it, stitching and pressing. These steps essentially create one block of the quilt. I repeated these steps until I had 12 blocks. The next step is creating the rows. Rows are made up of three of the blocks with one of the 13 and a half inch strips in between each block. I repeated this with all 12 blocks until I had 4 rows. Next I cut 5 more orange strips that were the entire width of the fabric by 1.5 inches long. I then pinned and stitched one to the top and bottom of the first row. Next, I'm pinning the top of the second row to the bottom of the first row and stitching together. I continue adding an orange strip and then a patterned row until they have all been incorporated and trim off any of the excess orange fabric from the strips. Next, I cut three more strips of the orange fabric that were the width of the fabric by an inch and a half long. I stitched these all together and sewed into one long strip. Next, I'm taking that long orange strip and I'm pinning it along the right side of the quilt all the way down until I reach the bottom where I'm going to trim off the excess. And then repeat the same thing on the other side and stitch together. Next up are the black border pieces. Here I'm cutting six pieces that are the entire width of the fabric by four and a half inches long. One of these strips is pinned to the top, one gets pinned to the bottom, and both get stitched on. Next, I'm taking two black pieces, pinning and stitching them together to create a longer black strip. After pressing, this is pinned on the right side of the quilt and stitched together with these steps repeating to finish the left side as well. For the next step in the quilting process, I was lucky enough to get a change of scenery. That is because I am in my sister's quilt store, so we can use this beautiful machine behind me, the long arm quilter. This was definitely the point where my sister's expertise took over and I just sat back and tried to learn. Notice how it kind of pulls it tighter in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to adjust for that. But it's totally fine. The backing of the quilt gets loaded on first by being safety pinned to a really big zipper. It zipped onto the machine and then rolled into place. Next, the inner batting is rolled on, and then the top of the quilt. The machine is moved over the quilt so the computer can calibrate where it starts. It's then tacked into place, and then the machine can do its magic. The long arm stitches go through the front, the batting, and the backing layers, holding everything together. This increases the durability and extends the longevity of the quilt. Traditionally, these stitches are done by hand and it can take months to finish one quilt. Thankfully, this machine can get it done within a few hours to a few days. So unfortunately, the machine couldn't finish the quilt quite in time before I had to head back, but that just means that we're gonna leave it here to have the machine finish quilting it, and then I'm gonna get a lovely package in the mail in the next couple of days, and I get to be very surprised. Well, hello. So it's been a couple of weeks since I was up at the quilt shop. 
uh, just due to some certain circumstances took a little bit longer to get done which is completely fine because it is still before Halloween so I get to enjoy the amazingness and spookiness of this quilt. It's a little hard to see right now but the quilting and the spiderweb pattern on it looks so amazing. I am very very happy with it. Um, the last steps are going to be just adding the binding onto it to make sure that everything is staying nice and neat and nothing frays. I'm going to be using the same orange fabric that I used for the borders to make the binding, so let's get to that. The binding is made up by eight strips of fabric that are the width of the fabric by two and a half inches long. Once cut, I'm stitching all eight pieces together to create one extremely long strip, folding in half with wrong sides together and pressing. As I'm pinning the binding to the quilt, I'm starting a few inches away from the edge of the binding. This is going to come into play later. With the raw edges together, I'm pinning this on the side of the quilt about halfway between the corners. This again gets stitched with a quarter inch allowance. As I reach a quarter inch away from the edge, I'm going to do what's called a mitered corner. Making sure my needle is still in the fabric, I'm turning the fabric at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to stitch all the way to the corner. To continue the binding, I'm rotating the fabric 90 degrees, making sure that it's flush at the top and the side. If it's folded correctly, you'll see a 45 degree fold underneath. I'm stitching that down and continue that for the rest of the corners. Stop a few inches away from where you started and join the two ends of the binding and stitch together, creating one long continuous piece needed to fit the length of the quilt. Trim away any unnecessary seam allowance and then stitch down. Alright, I am on the very last step. I am so close to finishing this. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that binding that I already ironed flat and I'm folding it over to the other side, encasing all the raw edges as well as the previous stitching line inside and pinning that into place. A lot of quilters will use quilting clips so they can just clip it on and go and that way they don't poke themselves. I don't have access to those at the moment so I'm just going to be using pins and probably poking myself as much as I would a regular pin cushion. But once I have that down I'm just going to hand stitch everything into place. It's going to take a very, very long time but I am prepared. I have moved to my favorite corner of the couch. I have my Universal Classic Monster Movies ready to go and I'm going to do that. to get some stitching done when I wasn't filming and I pinned my finger to the quilt. That's my finger pinned to the quilt. Cool!
I am incredibly happy with how it turned out. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. I started the first week of September and it's now the week of Halloween, but I am so incredibly proud of this. I'm very, very, very happy with it and I plan on using it a lot, maybe even past Halloween. Um, I don't know if you noticed too, but I felt like the couch needed a little something more than just the quilt. So I quickly threw together a couple throw pillows. I just used the extra fabric from the back and just some black cotton I had in my storage. I just cut out 15 and a half by 15 and a half inch squares, uh, stitched them together with a quarter inch seam allowance, flipped them right side out, and stuffed them with a lot of extra polyfill that I had left over from other projects. And then I just hand stitched the bottom of it closed. These are super comfy and I feel like they go really, really well with the quilt. So overall, I am incredibly happy with this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other ideas for videos that you'd love to see me do, definitely let me know in the comments below. And I just wanted to say have a happy... Something's not right. Something's missing. Oh yeah. Much better. Have a happy Halloween. Thanks, guys.